What's going on guys? I'm not your regular guy. No, 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 no. I'm your motivation guy. That's right. I'm here to motivate you, your friend, the one and only Keith Allen, man. You got to stick around for this video. I'm really excited to share this video with you. We're going to be going over nine tips and techniques, man, that's going to help you guys out extremely in your game. No matter if you're just starting out or you're, you're going into your last steps, you know, in Champions League, this is going to do you guys a huge advantage. So you got to stick around for the whole video. Don't log off. Watch the whole video because every single tip is going to help you guys out tremendously. But for your question today, okay, I'm wondering how many arena points do you have right now? I'm expecting some high numbers, guys, with how long the season two has been. So leave your answer in the comments, give the video a thumbs up, and then we'll check it out. Also, we recently launched our own subreddit, a place where you can discuss pro guides, ask us questions, you know, leave us suggestions, you know, and just get more involved, okay? Links are in the description. We'd love to have you join. And if you're looking for more help, you know, improving on Fortnite, ProGuys.com is your one-stop source. Our high-level coaches, analysis live streams, and exclusive courses can all help you rapidly get better at the game. So guys, be sure to check us out in the description below. All right, guys, it's time to be live right now. It's time to be crazy, okay? I don't care who's next to you. I don't care who's in the house. You better say this with me, okay? It's time to sit back. Come on, relax, and grab some of my favorite candy. What is that? Oh, that's a nice throw. It's that bunch of crunch. And let's get this going. Come on. So have you ever tried taking an opponent's wall, but when you're swinging your pickaxe, they edit and just land a nasty shot on you? Yep, we've all been there. It sucks, it really does. But you know, but good thing there's a solution to prevent that from happening. Instead of just standing near the center just to smack their wall, approach and hit it from the left side so that if your opponent edits, you can just strafe left and fall behind cover. You can also quickly look down and place a wall too, like something that you might need in case your opponent edits. Push it a step further by attaching a ramp to your wall, then smacking your opponent's structures from there. All right, guys, so once you take their wall and edit, the ramp is going to give you guys a nice right-hand angle to peek from, making it safer to take shots. Plus, you know, from the top of your ramp, you can get much closer access to all sides of their box in case, you know, they edit out. Overall, man, you know, while taking walls from the left side might be slightly slower than the traditional method, it's so much safer. And trust me, yo, it beats being sent back to the lobby any day of the week. All right, guys, so once you take your opponent's wall and edit it open, the next thing you need to work on is piece control. Controlling the inside piece in a box is like critical, man, when it comes to getting kills quickly. And when you fight for that inner structure, man, you have two options, either a stair or a cone piece. Each has its own advantages, but right now we're seeing more and more pros use cones. You know, cones are just quick and easy to place, you know, requiring no editing to expose your opponent, you know, unlike stairs. Not only that, but, you know, with their further range, you can set them from longer distances and trick your angles. As for when to use cones over stairs, you know, we've noticed that Benji Fishy will typically use them when his opponents are low. You know, if he sees his opponent waiting to shoot, he's going to go for stairs to try and block the potential shot, which is cool. I mean, that's always a smart idea. But if you're taking walls from the left side, you generally don't need to worry about getting hit. Overall, you know, you start using cones for box piece control more often if you want to end fights much quicker in your favor. Okay guys, so our next tip is to always try and protect your back when you're tunnel visioned. You know, a lot of us make the mistake of focusing on one direction for an extended period, right? Only to end up getting lasered in the back or just sniped in the head by a third party. Oh, that's annoying. You know, whether you're like smacking at someone's wall or you're firing an AR from the top of your ramp, leaving yourself exposed to even just one angle can be the difference between you dying to a third party or going on to win the match. So, you know, it's often worth it, like, to take an extra half a second to just put up some cover, you know, before you do things like, you know, go for shots or take walls. And this, guys, is really, you know, especially true for situations, you know, with a lot of players around, like the mid or late game. Because all the noise you make, man, is guaranteed to draw all those bloodthirsty third-party vultures to the fight. And if you're out in the open with your back and sides exposed, yo, it's a wrap. There's not going to be much you can do. So remember to protect your back out there, man, and just cover as many open angles as you can. Okay, so if there's one edit that you need to practice to perfection, all right, it's this one right here. It's the top right triangle, aka the peanut butter. 
Okay, so what's unique about this edit? Good question. Well, it does give you a right hand peeker's advantage. Also, you're jumping into your shot, man. Like those two combined make you an incredibly tough target to hit. And compared to other edits, none come even close to being as powerful. You know, although you can use this edit while like attacking, it's primarily a defensive move, right? Because, you know, as we said at the start, if you're attacking a wall, you should be doing it from the left anyway. At which point, you know, you're not following up with this edit. But your typical peanut butter should go like this. Edit while standing on a cone near the left or center so that you're not exposed once the edit is made. Then jump while strafing left and then shoot your target as soon as you can. From there, reset the edit ASAP, man, and pull out your wall and hold it. If you strike them hard, you can probably edit out again and just start applying pressure. But if you miss your shot, okay, hold tight and just see how your opponent plays it. You can try the edit again, but we suggest like switching it up a little. You know, you don't want to be too predictable, so maybe just throw in a window edit as well. Overall, man, the peanut butter edit can be a bit finicky, you know, but with some practice, you should get it down with no problems. Okay, guys, so these next few tips are crucial, so you got to stick around. You do not want to miss this. I guarantee you this. Chapter 2 has been out for like 7 months now, but honestly, many of us have forgotten about floppers. With how fast they heal you, floppers and slurp fish are still by far the most OP healing items in the game. And in the end game, their usefulness is amplified. You know, anytime you get pressured to the point of falling into the storm, you can just end up lurking in there for as long as you can keep munching fish. They pretty much give you a second life in situations where otherwise you'd be done for. And in the storm, you know, opponents usually won't pay attention to you, right? You can really do whatever you want, such as like scavenge for leftover loot, you know, find kills, or even creep your way into the high ground as you come back into the zone. If you can incorporate some fishing spots into your loot path, yo, you gotta do it. Anytime you find a harpoon, start harpooning. So that way, you know, you can just consistently bring a stack of fish into each and every end game. You know, heavy snipers are arguably like one of the most potent non-mythic weapons in the game, right? And with how easy they are to find at shadow bases, you definitely gotta start abusing their strength. There's just so much the heavy sniper is capable of doing. It can, of course, you know, get you huge tags or even kills from across the map. Just be patient, man, and just try to wait for predictable enemy movement, such as jumping or running in a straight line so you can land your shot with ease. But what's arguably even more useful is the heavy sniper's ability to instantly break structures. Yo, pull it out at the last second before you fire and even the best players are not gonna be able to react. You know, and depending on like how crazy you're feeling, <laughs> you can use it, you know, to either take walls or just barrel straight in. If you want to get fancy, FaZe Martos has lately been implementing pre-edits into his wall takes. And while it's sort of a flashy move, yo, I gotta admit, getting those kills looked extremely simple. Who knows, you know, maybe heavy snipers will get vaulted for season three, but as long as they're in the game right now, try landing at Shadow Bays and just see if you can abuse the heck out of them. You know what other weapon is extremely powerful? Let me tell you right now, all right? Ladies and gentlemen, it is the RPG. Obviously, you know, they're fantastic at knocking down structures and, you know, keeping your opponent from taking height, but I'm here to tell you guys about a straightforward yet massively impactful trick we hardly see anybody use, guys. That's the rocket drop. Anytime you're feeling, you know, a bit, you know, aggro and you want to drop directly into an opponent's like one by one, first, climb on top of their box, make sure you have control of the roof piece so you don't get edited down on, right? And after that, stand in on a corner and then just put up two adjacent walls at the opposite corner. Then aim at the bottom of that corner, jump, and once you start to fall, fire away. If your timing is right, the cone should protect you from any explosive damage. And at the same time, yo, it's gonna destroy everything below, like dropping you right into your opponent's box. Most players never even expect this, so it should be a simple cleanup once you're inside. But still, if you do mess up, you know, it can spell disaster. So try to get the timing down and creative before testing it out for real, all right? All right, guys, now it's time to talk about the storm dip. A move in one-on-one -on -one end game situations where you purposely dip into the storm on either high ground or low ground to hide your position and avoid damage. So if you need an example of how to use this, yo, look no further than Mr. Savage. In his famous last match at DreamHack Anaheim, he chose to stay on high ground and tank storm damage twice to prevent giving his opponent a shot. Essentially, you know, he traded about 10 or 20 health to avoid getting hit for more. 
smart. And despite Savage, you know, being out of mats here, you know, he ended up winning partly due to the storm dips. Mr. Savage also does this in cash cups, and you know, it couldn't leave his opponents more confused. Not lousy opponents, guys. I'm talking about like mongrel of all players, right? From his perspective, he's expecting Savage to peek an area in the safe zone. But Savage hits him with the storm dip, and his crosshair is nowhere near the right spot. You know, while it may seem counterintuitive, it may not make any sense to us, right? Dipping into the storm can be a fantastic way to secure the last hit on your opponent without giving them a chance to fire back. All right, guys, so this is our last tip to avoid the congested sides of the zone. During the mid game, you know, you can define congestion as parts of the zone that have the most players rotating through. So if the second circle spawns southeast, most players are coming through from the north and west. That means those sides have more players crawling around than, you know, let's say, you know, the very south or east parts of the circle. As for the end game, players tend to rotate on low or mid ground, you know, layers near the center of the circle. Those areas are easily the most congested. And, you know, if you ever find yourself with a scary number of players nearby, you know, do yourself a favor and just switch layers, either by building up or just editing down a bit. And, you know, while we would all love to control high ground <laughs> in every end game, you know, that's unfortunately not realistic. So if you're playing on the mid or low ground, you can just try rotating by the edge of the storm. That way, you know, you won't have to worry about players in that direction, which keeps you guys safe and also conserves viable materials since you won't have to build to cover it. All right, guys, once again, this is your guy. That's right, your motivation guy, your friend, the one and only Keith Allen. I really hope you enjoyed this video, man. Look, apply these tips. This is how we get better. We apply them, you know, whether you have to take notes, whether you have to listen to this over and over again, just apply it, like apply it in your game and you're gonna see improvement. Don't be frustrated, don't be irritated, okay? I know we go through our losing streaks. I know we go through just bad days sometimes, but you know what? Gotta keep going, apply this, man. And I'm telling you, you're gonna see a difference, all right? That's it for the video. Video guys thanks for watching i hope you guys found the tips helpful you know and, and really don't forget to like this video and subscribe you know for more just like it because we you know we've been doing exclusive player analysis live streams right here on this channel so you don't want to miss those hit that bell all right we'll see you soon